Alright, welcome back to the NUPOC video study guide for video 16. Uh, let's look at question 13 in the general math section of guide 1. So this is just asking us to find, um, find a series function uh, in terms of n uh, for this series that's written out here. So they were looking for some, you know, s basically as a function of n. So what does that equal? Um, so the best way to do this uh, is to just go ahead and write out the first few values of n in the first few terms and then write down what the relationship is in each case and then look for a relationship between um, between uh, what what you have to multiply n by just to get s or what you have to add to n just to get s. Look for, for what that is in terms of n and uh, and then we should have our solution. Okay, so let's start. So let's just write down, uh, we'll just do a quick table over here, right? So we'll have n and we'll have s and um, we'll write down sort of what s equals in terms of, of n, right? Um, as just a first iteration. So let's just go through a few terms. You don't even have to do all of them really, but let's see if we can find a pattern in the first few. Um, <clears throat> So let's go ahead and, and let's say that we start at n equals 1. I guess we could start at n equal, equals uh, 0, but let's start at n equals 1. In fact, I suppose um, you can really choose whatever uh, convention you want as far as, far as a, a starting value of n, 0, 1, uh, or minus 1. Um, but let's choose one because that's pretty common and it actually conveniently solves uh, this series uh, fairly quickly. All right, so let's say n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So s here at n equals 1 is 2, and then 6, 12, 20, 30. Let's just go all the way, 6 and 42. <coughs> so let's just say s equals s in terms of n, what does that equal? So here, uh, let's say s is just 2 times n, so it's 2n. Um, <clears throat> here it seems to be 3 times n. Here it seems to be 4 times n. n, 5n, and 6n, and 7n. So now, sort of the second part is we kind of want to look at these coefficients and say, well, how are these related to n? Right? So I'll just draw another column here. And so you can see that 2, how is 2 now related to n? Well, 2, well, that's, that's, that's 2 times n, right? So we could say maybe this is 2n times n. But let's try this here. Is 3 twice 2? No. Is 4 twice 3? No. But 2 is also n plus 1. 3 here looks like it's n plus 1, 4 looks like n plus 1, all the way down these coefficients look like they're n plus 1. So now we've eliminated all of our coefficients, everything is in terms of n, so we can say here, yep, that works, n plus 1 times n, n plus 1 times n, etc., all the way down. So our s of n will equal, we can write this single n first, so it'll be n times n plus 1. And again, we should really write, just to be a little bit more rigorous, um, I'll write it all together in the same block. We should really say s of n equals n times n plus 1 for n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. So indicating that it starts at 1. Um, without that information, someone could um, assume that n starts at 0 and, and they would have no way of knowing whether they were right or wrong or whatever, and they could just as easily say that our solution wasn't valid for certain values of n. So, uh, so this is our solution here, s completely in terms of n, n times n plus 1, for n equals 1, 2, 3, etc.